So you think you are a big magic user casting spells at everyone. Well, the power is not actually yours. So where does that power come from? Well, in this video, we're going to explore the possible sources of your magic points. Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is one of those short rules videos when I take a rule from the Mithras rule set and explain it in some depth. And remember to stay tuned to the end of this video to see the supporters of the channel and my content through their subscription via Patreon, Ko-fi and this YouTube channel. So I like to run magic rich campaigns from the humble folk magic user right the way up to the mighty sorcerer. Within the Mithras rule set, the magic points are calculated by the character's power characteristics. These magic points are the number of points that a caster can use up in order to fuel their spells. However, you can explore this concept further by asking, where do those magic points actually come from? So if you go to the core rulebook on page 115, it provides a list of possible sources for these magic points. These are self, sacrifice, magical locations, destruction, consumption, and veneration. But what do these sources actually mean and how would they work in a Mithras campaign? So I'm going to take each one separately and expand on it slightly. So first up, self. So self is the most common location or source. The magic points actually come from within the character. And once they've used up, they can replenish these magic points via rest or sleep. And if you're interested to know what happens when a character's magic point reaches zero, then you can check out my video on the topic. It will be linked in the card up there. Next up, sacrifice. This is when the caster must sacrifice something or possibly someone in order to get the magic points. This could be any specific animal, but it must be very valuable or be a specific type of animal. So not any animal would do. At this point, I have to make a confession. So when I was actually writing this script, I had uh, in my head, I remembered a fancy book that I had read. And within that book, the mages got their magic from draining the life out of people. Yes, it was pretty horrific. It was an excellent book and the way the evil mages got their magic reminded me of this sacrifice method. If anybody can tell me what that book was, I would really appreciate it. Just let me know in the comments below. Next up, magical locations. So these are places that the magic user needs to meditate or rest in order to replenish those precious magic points. And I'm not talking in their bedroom. <laughs> So, of course, these magic sites can be rare or even heavily guarded. And there's rules on page 116 about certain locations that could actually be used and what percentage of the magic points they will allow the sorcerer or magic user to replenish. Imagine the power if you could actually find one of these locations and seal it off or heavily guard it. Your character or NPC would be so rich and powerful. Next up, destruction and consumption. So this way is very similar to the magic locations, although the location is actually destroyed or corrupted in the process. 
If you've ever heard or enjoyed the Dark Sun campaign world from Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, then you will be familiar with this method. Because in that campaign, if my memory serves me right, you pull the life force from the ground itself. And as you do so, all the vegetation and animals die within a certain radius. I can imagine that spells are rarely used and spellcasters keep their talent well and truly hidden. And finally, veneration. This is when the magic points are replenished and provided by some sort of worship activity to a super being. The more people the caster orchestrates to be at the worship activity, the more magic points they will get back. Initially, you might see this basically as an evil character worshipping a supernatural being, but we could have it with good characters as well. They could worship, the town could come together to fill their chosen champion of magic with the power, and the caster would store this up ready for the mission ahead. And of course, they would have to be extremely wise about when and how they use that magic. No one will appreciate it if that caster turns up to the final encounter with no magic at all. So, as you can see, there are a variety of methods for gaining those magic points. The Mithras system can be easily adapted for any campaign where magic plays either a main part or really a quite minor part. For me, magic is the best part of any campaign, so rest and sleep always bring those magic points back. This is because I want those spells to be flying left, right and centre from both the good and the not so good casters. If you found this or any of my videos on the channel supportive, motivational or even inspiring, then please consider supporting the channel in any way you can. Until next time, happy role playing everyone and I hope all your opposed roles are successful and you have a range of specials to apply. Thanks for watching everyone. See ya. Bye.